When it starts here, the little trees are growing, which are burned down at present, then this could become a forest. And then other people could say, you don't make use of the land, now we take it. Because he doesn't own it, he has such a kind of title on it, which says that he has to use it for a few years. And this is now the way to use it, so that nobody else takes it away. But now everything is gone, all nutrients are gone. These areas, we have 27 million hectares of those in Indonesia. They spread out more and more like an oil stain. And this way the forest disappears forever. Only if we do it like here in Samboccia Lestari, we get a chance to get it back. And that means a lot of work and this also means that we have to keep an eye on such fires every day. What the visitor does not notice at first glance the orangutan paradise of Samboccia Lestari was once, not too long ago, also burned down. Biologically dead wasteland. After consideration that even the best kind of orangutan rehabilitation will remain ineffective in the long run if the natural surroundings, the tropical rainforest, disappears by and by, an up to now unequaled project came into being. In 2002, the plan matured to a forest, a new rainforest on the burned down dead area. Such an enterprise had until then been regarded as impracticable as the natural rainforest represents a complex system of many hundreds of plant species which all require the same habitat. From 2001 onwards, the Orangutan Survival Foundation started the reasonably priced purchase of destroyed areas near the small town of Samboccia. According to the drawn-up master plan, the local population was also to be included into the project right from the beginning, because so much was clear. Without their support, the project would be doomed to failure. Yeah. So he was the very first who sold us his land, and since then more and more have followed his example, and none of them have regretted it. Willy Smits profited from his fundamental knowledge as a forest scientist. He developed a special kind of humus with a microbiological growth promoter which, to the greatest possible extent, matched the soil conditions of the rainforest. And he established a tree nursery for all imaginable plant species. And he was finally able to start reforestation on an area of 1,600 hectares. That is, it was not quite so easy because many different aspects had to be taken into consideration. Um, how about Herbert, how we did this, we had this grassland, thousands and thousands of hectares, and the difficult question was, how do we make a new forest out of this? First of all, we started to construct a new road around the area, with a water conduct and electricity for the people. Then there's a sugar palm zone with a width of 100 meters, which withstands the fire and which yields a lot of money for the local population. And then comes a natural fence of these palms with many, many thorns. You can't get through those and orangutans can't either. And at the inside, behind this fence, there's this area for reforestation and for the water harvesting and where our orangutans can live when all the other forest has disappeared. And unfortunately, it looks at the moment as if this is going to happen if things do not change. And it's for this reason that our book is so important, that it is at long last shown what really happens here in Indonesia. Yes, this way everybody gets a piece of land which is in fact large enough for three families. In the first year, we plant shadow trees there and a fence of very valuable wood types at the border. That means everyone who wants to get in has to get through the land up to this fence. Under these shadow trees, we plant sugar palms, which yield 60 different products and which protect the area. And this is where the palms with the many thorns stand, meaning the fence. And then, when the people want to start harvesting the palms, they only have to remove the shadow trees before the start of the first harvest. In the meantime, the people of Samboccia Lestari have developed further sources of income, like, for example, the production of little art objects as souvenirs and furniture from leftover wood. The rainforest has meanwhile developed splendidly. 
Birds and insects have resettled here, and even the measured amount of rain is already ranging 20% higher than before. The central building, with its technological scientific facilities, reaches the highest level. For example, all plantations can be completely monitored. And slowly it is becoming reality, this fairy tale of Samboccia Lestari. Maybe also for the giants. This is what they are called. Those old male apes, the pashas with their thick cheek pads and those mighty arms. Most of them were seriously injured or half starved when they came to Samboccia Lestari. All those we're going to visit now, these giants which are sitting there, lonely and captured, suffer from hepatitis B and therefore can't get together with the others. And it's for them that we now want to buy the Lapatang Island. That's in principle an island where they would all have enough space to live. Yes, island of the giants. This is what we want to create there. Yes, he has cried. I'm also crying now with my heart. But they must get away from here. They must get on to the island. We must give you a better life there, Papa. I'm so sorry, we must get on. I'll come back and see you later. I hope we have been able to impart an impression on the importance of the work of Dr. Willy Smits and his many assistants. I also hope you will understand that we have not hesitated for one second to publish this important book, which in text and photographs goes far beyond anything we've been able to show you just now. At this point, let me express once again my gratitude to J. U. Lal and Gerd Schuster, who've played a decisive part in this book project. There are such books which can be published. Others, however, simply must be published. Thinkers of the Jungle, the Orangutan Report, was something we felt must be published. We look forward to your support.